I have two budget lights from the company Hoko Light that I'd like to share with you today. The first is the X Owl headlamp and this small compact light called the Runner Bright. If you're interested in hearing more about these two lights, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I'd like to thank the company Hoko Light for sending me these two lights to share with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for each of these lights. I'll go over their physical and performance specifications as well as their modes of operation. And of course, then we'll do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the X Owl Bright, I'll share with you what else it came with. So it arrived in this box. And in the box is the manual with warranty information, a USB Type-C charging cable, and something a little different. This is a bag of clips that you would use to attach the headlamp to a construction hard hat. And I'll be able to demonstrate how they're used in a moment. Let me put that out of the way, bring the light back in. So what are the key features for this light? Well, it does come with a three-part strap, head strap for around your head. I'll say right up front, there's not a lot of extension in this. It is, as you can see, I've got it pretty much maxed out. And uh, maybe I have a little bit larger than normal head, but this doesn't give me a whole lot of variance. The only thing I can say about it is that it's quite stretchy and that is a plus. It also has little silicone bands running down the inside to help keep it in place. It, the information say that there are fluorescent rings around the two LEDs on the front, and there is, there, there's a slight green ring around it, but to be honest, I can't see it when the light is turned off and I wouldn't be sure what the benefit of it would be anyway. It does have an adjustable tilt, and I'll show, demonstrate how that is done in a few moments time. And one thing that's kind of nice to have on this light is it does have a magnetic base that you can use to attach the lamp to uh, something if you're trying to use it for some remote work. It does have, of course, a battery charging indicator. That's with the two little LEDs right in the center. Now, key features for this on a budget flashlight, let me show you how the strap removes and put that aside for now, is the fact that it is made of aluminum. Partially. So when I agreed to accept these lights, I, I had been under the impression that the entire thing was going to be made from aluminum. It is not. But the battery casing is made from aluminum and the uh, forward part where the LEDs are, are made from a, a, a durable ABS material. At least that's what the information says. Now there is one other thing that I haven't mentioned that came with the light and I want to bring this up now is it does have an 18650 uh, battery inside a 2600 milliamp version but it's built in. You can you cannot get it out and exchange it. So a bit of a, a con there, but still it's a good battery and it should last a good long while. Let's go over some of the physical specifications for this light. So to begin, overall length 3.54 inches. The width in this direction, it's the best way to describe it, is 2.2 inches with the height at its most right here at 1.61 inches. And its weight with the head strap attached is 5.29 ounces. And and it does have an IPX44 waterproof. And I know that's not uh, corrected, correct in the way it's printed. It should be IP44, not IPX44. And it says it passes the impact test, but it doesn't say to what standard. So uh, I can't quite tell you how th that works. As far as the performance specifications for the X Hour Bright, there are three levels of illumination. It's starting at low, 350 lumens with a runtime of 12 hours, a medium of 900 lumens with a runtime of between 9 and 10 hours, and a high of 1800 lumens with a runtime between 6 and 8 hours. Going over the operation for the X Hour Bright, just before I do, I just want to point out that there is the USB Type-C charging port on the bottom of the light. 
And on top is the on-off button that, that controls the three levels of settings. You turn the light on, it's always going to come on in high. If you press it again, it'll go to medium. And if you press it again, if you go to low. Regardless of which level you leave it on, if you leave it for more than eight seconds, the light will, uh, or the button will allow you to turn it off without going through the lumen settings. And then, but when you turn it back on again, it's going to come back on high. And once again, I'll just leave that set there for a few seconds to demonstrate that it will turn off and come back on in high. So part of the reason I turned the camera off while I installed this is, is that it can be a bit of a struggle just getting the strap in each of the four clips to keep it on the helmet, but I'll give you a bit of a close-up. Now, I could do a better job of making sure that's completely inside, but I wanted to show you where it would pass through the little slot onto the clip. It's functional, it works, and I think even what I've done here is enough for short-term use, but if you wanted to leave it on your helmet, you might want to take it the extra step just to make sure that it's fit it completely inside of the clip. And what I can show you now as well is how the tilt that uh, works on this. So you can see on the back of the light, hopefully it's focusing in there, is uh, a number of grooves, neural grooves running the length of it. So when the light is installed, as I'll do in a second, um, it matches up with a, just a little plastic detent right here. And that's what allows for the, rota or the rotation so that you'll hear it probably very, not very loud, but it does have multiple settings all the way up and down. And part of my demonstration will be to show you using the light on top of the helmet. All right, now we're going to take a look at the other light, Hoku light scent, and this is called the Runner Bright, presumably to be used for running. But before we do, let me just share with you what it came with. So it came in this box along with the warranty and uh, user manual and a USB Type-C charging cable. Put those aside. Now, the light has a few kind of interesting key features. To begin with, it has two distinct uh, lighting sources. First, there is a pair of LEDs here on the end of the light. And the other lighting source is this COB or circuit on board LED type of arrangement here in yellow. Now, it has five lighting modes, two white light levels, low and high, it from off the circuit board, and a white light level here for three. And the other two is a green and a red LED that uh, will light up through the COB. It has the clip on the back, which is plastic. I can't say how durable be over, durable it'll be over time, but the way I intend on using it, I think it'll work just fine. Presumably, you could attach this on the brim of your hat if you wanted to. The way I'd like to use it is use the clip to attach it to a shirt or a jacket or a strap on my jacket or a pack or anything like that. I think you'll see when I demonstrate it how much uh, more uh, convenient it is to use it that way. It does have a little lanyard hole built into it, so you could run a lanyard through this and let it dangle around your neck as well. It does have battery status indicator for charging. Two small LEDs right in the center, right there. It'll be uh, red while it is charging, and then it changes to green when it is completed charging. The entire thing itself is uh, an ABS plastic. There's not a lot of information uh, on this light as far as uh, impact resistance. Actually, there's no information for impact resistance, but it does have a water proof rating of IP44, so that'd be the same as the other light has. So let's go over the physical specifications for this light. First off, overall length in this direction, 2.52 uh, inches, width side to side, 1.46 inches, and the thickness, and that would not include the clip itself, but the thickness of the light is 0.67 inches, and the weight is a scant 1.06 ounces. So it's, it is a nice, small, compact light. Performance specifications. So on the COB or the COB, it has a high of 500 lumens, which will last for three to four hours. The medium setting of 250 lumens, which will last four to five hours. And the two LEDs come in at 100 lumens, which will last six to eight hours. The red light, as you'll see, and it is quite a bright red light, five to seven hours, but doesn't give a lumen setting though. And same for the green light, quite bright, but I don't know what the lumen setting is. Also five to seven hours. 
Now, as far as uh, operation of the runner bright, it's just very simple. The center right here is the on off switch and it will cycle through each of the lighting settings and uh, it ha like the other light, if you allow it to sit in any lumen setting for approximately eight seconds and press the button again, it'll turn off. However, when you turn it back on, it does not have a memory for the last lumen setting or mode, so it'll have to run through each of them. So let me demonstrate now. To start with, it comes on in high for the cob, press it, it goes down to low, press it again. The two forward LEDs come on, press it again. It comes in with red and press it again it comes in in green. Now if I leave it set where it is right now in green and I'm just noticing that the light itself is much more green than it is showing up on the camera but you should be able to see when I do the testing what that looks like and if I turn it off now it will turn off but when I turn it back on it comes back on high from the COB. Having shared with you the key features as well as the performance and physical specifications and the operation of each of these lights Let's do some testing. So I'm doing some nighttime testing for the Hoko Light Runner Bright, and I'm going to be holding this in my hand so that you can see what it looks like in all its different levels. So I'll turn it on, it comes on on high. If I press the button again, it dims down to low for the white light. If I press the button again, it gives me the forward two little beams and uh, I don't think, I'll show it again from an angle behind the camera, but really, it's not something I could navigate around with. If I press the button again, now there's the red. So this is what I could use for running or walking or bicycling. If I wanted people to see me, if I press it again, it goes to green. Now I'll just reposition myself behind the camera so I can show you what it looks like casting forward. So I just repositioned the camera to uh, shine it against the side of my house. So you, again, 15 feet away, on high it does pretty good there it is on low in white there it is on well you know when i do it this way that's the forward two little leds it's not bad but then again we're still only 15 feet away so you could use this for navigating around your driveway or in your home but uh, not if you're trying to run or bicycle that'll turn off i'll turn it on run through get to the red you can see the red is quite bright though. It does a good job of illuminating the area and the green does as well. All right, I'm doing some nighttime testing for the Hoko Light X Owl Bright, the headlamp, and uh, I'm gonna turn it on and shine it against the side of my house so you get an idea of the beam pattern. And I'm standing about 15 feet away. So the light always comes on on high. And what you can see is there is a central hotspot and there is some flood and the hotspot kind of moves into flood very gradually, but you can see where it is, uh, the line kind of distinguishes it. If I press it again, that's high, medium, low. You know, low's not bad for inside the house, but outside you'd want this, the high. So that is nice and high. Now I'll just reposition the camera so that I can shine it into my backyard and it does a good job of illuminating the backyard as you can see it's starting to rain out here right now uh, it's illuminating the backyard that's 60 feet away yeah it's a it's a good light i really quite like the illumination levels on the hoko light x owl bright all right let's do some pros and cons for each of these lights before we wrap this video up we'll start with the x owl bright headlamp let's start with what do i really like about it the lighting three levels of illumination all good lumen settings white light with enough forward cast and enough flood light to be functional for the tasks that i would like to use this light for uh, that's one of the things i think i like about it most the fact that it is removable from the head strap is uh, quite good it has that magnetic tail cap on it and the little clips that you use it to attach to your hard hat you know that's different it's different than anything else I have I think I like that as a plus I haven't seen that on any other lights so what is it I really don't like about it well right off of the top it is the design not so much the construction but the design of it the fact that it has this aluminum tube on the back and then the LEDs are attached to the front of it does make it a bit forward heavy so uh, I wouldn't use this for running I likely wouldn't use this for hiking uh, in the woods you could but be aware 
that you're going to feel that light. It's got a little bit of weight, and as you step, it's going to feel like it's bouncing a little bit, even with the strap that goes over the top of my head. Uh, not a deal breaker, again, just to be aware of. Uh, what else do I not like about it? I, I guess I was disappointed to discover when it arrived that it did have that plastic housing. I cannot say how durable that will be against impacts on the pavement. I did not test that. It does say it's impact resistant. It just doesn't say to what level. Other than that, I think the, the construction of it is just fine. Uh, the other thing I guess that is a bit of a disappointment is the fact that yes, it does have an 18650 battery, but it is hardwired in to the light itself so it's really not removable or exchangeable so once it dies it's time to get a new lamp okay those are the pros and cons for this light let's take a look at the runner bright so the runner bright is that small little compact light it has some really cool features about it but let's do the pros and cons start with small compact light weight and then that's because, of course, it is made from an ABS plastic. Again, I don't know what I, uh, the impact resistance of this is because it's made of plastic, but I'll take it that it is durable enough, at least for its, its intended purpose and price point. So what do I really like about it? I do like the fact that it has a number of lumen settings on this, especially on the cob, the COB on the front. The two uh, white lights from that, actually quite bright. Now they're all flood, there's no forward cast, but there's enough flood light there that I can use it for navigation. This would work around a campsite. It wouldn't give me hiking or running abilities and for a running light, no, I don't think so. I wouldn't use this as a running light for illumination. However, with the red and green, yeah, I can see using this as a running light that I would clip onto my jacket or somewhere else so that people would know I'm there. Basically for a safety light, for traffic safety purposes, I think the green and the red light would serve very well. The two little LEDs on the front, well, worthless in my opinion. They don't provide very much illumination at all. Uh, yeah, I just don't see using those for anything. In fact, I wish they weren't there. Um, the green and red lights are kind of bright. They are a little brighter than I would like them to be. And in fact, I would actually like them to have a slow strobe. If I'm going to use this for running uh, or hiking or biking, where I want people to be able to see me, then a slow strobe with the green and the red would be a nice features. Now, the red was interesting. It is bright enough that when I turned it on in a darkened room, I could navigate the room quite well. Like actually, I could do that with the green light as well. So it's nice to be able to use it that way to preserve your night vision just be aware that you're going to have to go through the white lights to get to those. And it does not have a memory if you turn it off and turn it back on. So yeah, those are the pros and cons for this light. Now, I think we can probably wrap this video up. Overall, these are good lights for the money. And that's the way they say it. I wouldn't call them good lights. There are many lights much better than this on the market. But if you're on a tight budget and these features match what you would, are looking for in a light, then they are worth looking at. They would not be my first choice. I would try to save a little bit of money and go to a, a higher level light. Having said that, again, they're good lights for the money. Okay, I'll provide all the information I have regarding these lights in the video description below, as well as the links to where you can purchase them. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.